Formula One crash testing. It's something that all teams need to do before the cars are allowed out onto track. And there's only two places in the world where the FIA allows you to do this. And one of those is in the UK. This is the Cranfield Impact Center, which is a test laboratory for Formula One cars. It started with the FIA approaching them back in the mid 80s to create testing standards for the championship and have been doing crash tests there ever since. Well, the testing process really is quite similar to cars on the road. All cars have to reach a standard safety standard to be able to be driven on the road. And it's the same principle really for Formula One cars where we mount the, the chassis onto a sled. We test it at the same speed and the criteria which we use to see whether a car passes is the same for all, for all teams. So the nose cone of the vehicle on the front, the rear section, which is attached to the gearbox at the back. We do the steering column to make sure that the steering column is able to collapse in a, in, in a test. And then we also do a bulkhead test so we make sure that the fuel cell is maintained and kept within the chassis and that the seat belts work the whole chassis region is kept intact. They have to pass the test by making sure that the car doesn't stop abruptly. And then on the other hand, it can't be too soft either. It cannot deform and cause intrusion into the survival space, the cockpit region of the vehicle. But what we do for the front wings and the and front structure is that that is mounted on the wall. We move our sled, which is a flat impactor. We crush the wing plus the nose cone structure. So we test at the moment at 17 meters per second. And we measure the speed, we measure the deceleration, and the carbon fiber structure is very good at absorbing energy. But what happens in, is during a crash test that it doesn't just fold like a steel perhaps structure would. It goes into small pieces. We can normally see that we don't really want the structure to show large cracks, which are appearing right back to the bulkhead. The energy must be all absorbed within the area and, and the crash front. We have high-speed cameras, so they're recording at a thousand frames per second. And with those cameras, with high-speed cameras, you need an awful lot more light to be able to capture the event. It wouldn't work in normal daylight conditions. We turn the lights on and make it a very, very intense light for um, a short period of time. For the 2022 regulations, teams were testing up to 10 months before the Barcelona shakedown. And if we use a nose cone as an example, this is typically how the crash testing works. They'll create a design and reinforce it with more carbon fiber than they usually would, resulting in it being heavier, but could say with confidence that it will actually pass the tests. They'll then work back reducing the amount of material to save on weight until either the part isn't safe or beneficial to the car's performance, which is what we see being reported when teams fail in pre-season. Now teams can crash test as much as they like until they feel confident enough that the part can be fully homologated, by which point they'll then invite someone in from the FIA to actually spectate a crash test themselves and working with the impact sensor they can assess the damage and see if that part has actually failed or passed. We would do perhaps on typically five to ten perhaps practice tests on nose nose cones with just the team here. There used to be a, a dynamic side impact test, but now that's turned into a static test. So it's a low speed push test to a very high, high load, which is applied to the side impact tubes, which are the two tubes coming out of the, of the side of the structure, which are performing the um, energy absorbing capabilities. And the halo testing, which we started with the FIA back in um, 2015, 2016, so they were looking into developing a halo structure. So we then started performing tests outside, looking at its strength capabilities. We're looking at bolts, weld configurations, looking to see if wheels were fired at halos, how would they deflect. But the key point I think with halos is that the, the way that they're integrated, it's no use having this really strong structure on top of the car if the structure below it is not strong enough to handle it. Now, although this is on a university campus, this is all done behind closed doors. Of course it is, it's teams testing out secret stuff. So don't expect to come on down and getting a full demonstration of an F1 car crashing into a wall. However, they do work with the university with their postgraduates. So there's a motorsport MSc course and automotive engineering and mechanical engineering courses which are run here. And we support those doing lectures, tutorials, and support students on their projects to guide them through them. And actually some of the students from the, those courses have ended up then working Formula One teams. My thanks to Jim and to the whole entire team at the Cranfield Impact Center for not only letting me come along and visit, but also for keeping all of our favorite drivers safe, including Daniel Ricciardo. <laughs>